Bill and company joining us now to take some uh, questions. Uh, Dean, great to have you with us here uh, back in the program. Thank you very much. Uh, how are things looking now for uh, U.S. equities first, uh, the Nasdaq uh, specifically, and uh, then uh, come to India? I mean, how are things looking for the Nifty, the benchmark? Go on. Yeah, so uh, the Nasdaq specifically, uh, we put the market back down to downtrend today after the close as it undercut September lows. And, um, you know, basically we're looking at uh, another 6% lower in terms of next level support at around 9,800. Um, and that's going to take us to, you know, 40% on high. And uh, so I think there's a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, starting with last week, you know, we've, we've seen non-farm payroll coming in hotter than expected. Uh, that started the volatility. And then uh, t uh, today, of course, you know, we've got uh, the news around uh, the British guilt and the Bank of England trying to stabilize the pension market. Um, and that's causing sort of a black swan type of uh, event uh, in Europe. And uh, let's not forget that, you know, there are pension funds all over the world. It's a, it's a very large market, and, um, you know, what these pension funds were doing is they're using derivatives uh, to squeeze out more gain. And, of course, you know, we've seen the, seen the volatility in the mark, bond market, and uh, performance has been very poor. And uh, they're facing a liquidity crunch. So uh, I don't think this is over yet. Uh, so we are looking at uh, potentially another leg down on the NASDAQ. Uh, and also we're looking forward to PPI numbers coming out tomorrow and CPI numbers on Thursday, and uh, if they come in, you know, higher than, uh, than expected, uh, the Fed is going to stay, stay the course and continue to raise rates, which, of course, is going to put some more further pressure on the market as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so on the other side, you know, we, we've seen uh, oil markets going back, oil, oil prices going back up, and the U.S. dollar is uh, spiking again. Uh, so, you know, definitely we're in a uh, storm at the moment. Okay, we're in a storm at the moment. It doesn't look good at all. Dean, uh, you spoke about how the bond market mayhem in, the, in Europe could turn out to be a black swan event globally. What does this mean for risky assets uh, like emerging market equities? Because India so far has been quite resilient. We've barely lost about 2% of our value this year. Do you think that outperformance or resilience can continue? Or is it, uh, you know, uh, a situation where a big storm will take all boats with it? Uh, yeah, that's something uh, we're looking at very closely. I mean, Indian market, you know, has been very resilient. Um, and it's going to test uh, the 200-day moving average currently at around 57,000 on the Sensex. Uh, we see the next level support at 100-day moving average, which is about 1% away at 56,000. And uh, support after that is around 55,000, only 4% away. So, uh, but let's hope that, um, you know, the market finds support at the 200-day moving average. That would be a very good sign. You know, outside of India, uh, you know, when you look at the um, rest of Asia, they're already down 35% uh, um, off highs. And uh, when you're looking at AAXJ, you, you know, index as well as EEM, uh, so definitely India is the bright spot, continues to be, and, um, but uh, we pay attention to technical, so we want to make sure that the, the market fi can find support at the 200-day moving average. Um, and if not, um, you know, it's not all bad. We have another level of support 1% away at the 100-day moving average. Right, Deem. Uh, uh, you know, we're seeing some support, like you said, at the 200 and the 100-day moving average. What if... Uh, uh, you know, there was some uh, uh, black swan event, so to say. There was further downside that we saw in global markets. And the Nifty were to break that 100-day moving average as well. Then were, would all bets be off given the outperformance and the valuations of uh, the Indian market? Uh, potentially. I, if, if, if we break the 100-day moving average, like I said, I think there's a large, fair amount of support at 55,000. Um, it could be a short-term knee-jerk reaction, uh, but when you're looking at fundamentals for India, it's quite strong. You know, uh, GDP growth uh, still outpacing the rest of the world and around 6%. Uh, you have uh, lower inflation relative to the rest of Asia, um, and as well as, um, you know, very strong, uh, you know, middle, middle class income uh, coming up. So there's a lot of good things, you know, baked into fundamentals for the Indian market. 
And that's why we continue to love it. Um, but definitely, if we do see, you know, global storm, um, you know, of course, we're going to see some knee, knee jerk reaction. But I would say those are buying opportunities for India. Oh, that's an optimistic note that we're ending this conversation on. Dean, thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, so if there is a...